What is up guys, Sean here with another tutorial for you. I have been getting a lot of requests for Photoshop tutorials. So I've decided to do one on airbrushing since a lot of you guys work with portraits. Now I'm gonna show you some simple steps to accomplish an airbrush look or softening up the face. Now there are a ton of ways that you can do this. I've shown you through Lightroom how you can do it. Photoshop has a program that is similar to Lightroom and it's called Camera Raw. Uh, CS4, CS5 have it. So what happens is when you open up a raw file, let me show you here, Camera Raw opens up. So it is a default, you can change it in the settings if you want Camera Raw to open up when you open up a raw file. So you have your .dng files for Nikon and .cr2 for Canon. So there is a number of ways that we can go about um, softening up the face, giving it an airbrush look and so forth. Now again, this is not so much of a tutorial on how to use the tools, rather a tutorial on how to um, soften up the skin and give you a nice airbrush look. There's, like I said, there's a few ways of doing it within Photoshop and I'm gonna show you one of my favorites. But real quick so I can help you distinguish the difference between the two, let's go ahead to the top left here under adjustment brush click on that and let's drop down the clarity on your right it's already dropped down and what this is going to do same thing that you've seen in Lightroom it is going to soften it up so let's go ahead and just paint in right here a little bit so we can see the difference I won't cover the whole face I just want uh, to show you uh, how it looks using your uh, brush tool here using camera raw so it's pretty much the same thing as Lightroom. There's not a whole lot of difference. Although in my personal opinion, I feel Lightroom is a lot easier to use than Camera Raw, but sometimes if you're working on a photo to jump and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop, it can be quite cumbersome. So if you have a particular image that you want to work on, you can go ahead and open that image up in Camera Raw and work between Camera Raw and Photoshop since it works a lot easier. All right, so as you can see here, we did already a pretty good job of lightening up the, uh, sorry, softening up the face. Let's drop it down to zero, see the difference, the before and after. Here is before the airbrushing and here is the after. So pretty big difference just by using that. Now here is a quick tip that you'll need to know. When using a clarity tool in Lightroom or Camera Raw, it doesn't work as good on dark skin than it does light skin. So the more light that you have on your skin or object or subject that you're working on, the better this tool works. So there are times when you can use this tool and there are times when you need to try other methods to really soften up the skin. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's close out of here. If you hit done here on the bottom right, it will actually close your image and you have to reopen it again. But the good thing is that once you open it up, it'll revert back to where you left off. So you won't lose anything. So what we want to do here is open object. So let's go ahead and click on that. Okay, so we have our image here. I'm going to show you two quick ways of adjusting the skin, uh, airbrushing the skin, should I say. Uh, you can choose either way, whichever one works for you. Some There might be situations to use it in other ways. So I'm, I'm going to show you both ways real quick. First one we're going to do is we're going to grab this layer right here and we're going to duplicate it. So just drag it down here at the bottom right next to the trash symbol. And now you have your copy on top of your original layer. Now what we're going to do is go to the top over here and choose a blur. Um, in this case, Let's do a surface blur. I, I like using surface blur. It just gives me a little more flexibility and control over my um, my blur. But you can use Gaussian blur or just a regular blur. It'll do pretty much the same thing. Okay, so here we have our image completely blurred. Now, don't worry. We're going to fix this up and we're going to see some pretty noticeable difference like almost immediately. So let's click OK to commit the changes and let's start working on uh, clearing this up. All right, so here we have our layer completely blurred. Now, what we are going to do is we're gonna take our eraser tool and we are going to start painting. Now, before we do that, we have to rasterize the layer first. So go ahead and rasterize that layer. Now we can start erasing it. Uh, make the brush a little bit bigger. 
and let's soften up the edges a little bit uh, here. Okay, so let's start erasing. As you can see, we're taking away the blur around the hair and everywhere else but the face. So I'm going to erase everything around and I'm going to fast forward so you guys can see the end result. So as you can see, erasing the top layer is starting to reveal uh, the details in the eyes, the hair, and everywhere else but the main parts of the body and the face. So what we're going to do is come in here and start erasing the lips because this is one thing that we don't want blurred. Uh, some people like blurring the lips and some don't. I don't like blurring the lips. I like to keep the detail uh, in, in the lips. So you might want to do the same. Just depends on your project, what you're working on. In this particular case, I'd like to reveal the lips. Another thing you want to do and focus on is the nose. As you can see right here, the nose looks like one big blur. You want to keep the nostrils free and clear of that. Uh, I didn't raise my opacity up to 100, so let's do that again. There we go. Clean it up just a little bit more. There we go. A little more detail on the lips because that's what we want. I'm not getting all perfect here, so don't worry. Uh, you guys will work on your projects and get a little bit more detail in there. All right, so let's clear those nostrils. There we go. Uh, again, around the edges of the nose as well. Let's drop down the opacity and the flow to about 50% because I don't want it to erase too hard. I want to do, do a nice little soft erase. There we go. Because you don't want to lose the detail in the nose as well. On this side as well, you want to make sure there's a separation between her nose and her cheek uh, and whatever project you're working on. Uh, so there you go, folks. Uh, pretty easy, pretty simple way to airbrush your subject here uh, without doing too much work. As you can see, a pretty clean image. Let me get in the arm right here to separate the arm from her face because I'm just being a little picky like that. Um, there you go. So there is our end result with airbrushing. Now keep this in mind that you don't want to go overboard. Make sure you keep it within reason. You don't want it to look fake either. So what you can do, this top layer, you can adjust the opacity. So you can drop it down. Let's go down to about, I don't know, 70, 70%. Um, maybe even a little less than that. Sorry, my mouse is getting stuck. Let's go around 65, 66. So there we go. So let's turn it off. That's what it looks like before. And here's your after. Uh, again, you can get in there and um, be a little more detailed with the erasing. And if you want to see exactly where you're erasing, so you can be a little more precise, the bottom, the original layer, go ahead and turn that off. So you can see exactly where you've missed and where you need to erase. Usually the darker areas around this area here outside is where you want to get a little closer or, or erase. Uh, this is her chin or right underneath her chin, so you don't want to erase that. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do it another way. Now what you want to do is go ahead and click the add layer mask at the bottom here of your layers palette. And that gives you this little white box. What you want to do from there is move over here to the left of your tools palette and click this edit in quick masks mode. What this is going to do is you're going to brush in and it's going to show you the red area where you're brushing in. Kind of like how Lightroom works where you can turn on and off the mask tool so you can see where you're painting. This is very, pretty much exactly the same idea. So let's go ahead and just start painting in here. I won't paint the entire image as well. I might, but I'm not going to get detailed about it just because I want you guys to see how this works. Okay. So paint in there as much as you can, especially the big surface areas. You know, you don't have to get too precise right now, or at least I don't have to get too precise right now. I just want to show you guys because I want you guys to start creating some pretty awesome images and share them on my Facebook page. So if you guys haven't jumped on my Facebook page, go ahead and do that. Um, I have the link right there in the comment section, the description uh, section of this video. If not, uh, here's my Facebook address, facebook.com slash creativeviewtv. 
drop in your images i will leave my feedback on them and i'll help you guys along the way to perfect help perfect your post editing skills all right so now we have her painted in so let's go ahead and get out a quick mask mode when you turn that off you see that it's selected now by default everything outside of her face is selected so what you want to do is inverse the selection if you're on a mac it's, it, it is shift control i and now you have her face selected uh, alternatively you can go to the top here and click select inverse okay on pc i'm not too sure what it is all right so what we want to do now is we want to create a surface blur so this is, happens to be the last one i use again gaussian blur blur whichever one you like but i just like using the surface blur it gives me a little more flexibility uh, and control over um, my surface blur okay so here your little box pops up gives you the ability to adjust your radius and your threshold now you can hide the selection by hitting control h and there you go guys pretty much the same thing as um, using the other technique that i showed you it is a lot more powerful than using the clarity tool in camera raw and even um, lightroom but again you don't want to go overboard so this this does give you a very smooth out look but make sure you're precise in filling in the areas and coloring the areas that you want blurred otherwise you'll get a pretty fake looking image so again try not to go overboard but you can adjust the radius uh, you can bring it down a little bit so it's not so harsh you could also adjust the opacity okay so now that we've committed the changes this is pretty much how our end result looks I wanted to bring about one more point here before we get out of here when you open up a raw file this little thumbnail shows up here once you get out of the Adobe camera raw and you open as object then this is what you call the smart object so if I double click on that it'll open up camera raw uh, also what happens is that any filters that you apply to this image will fall underneath here so as you can see my surface blur I can turn off the surface blur okay so we won't necessarily wait for that but you guys get the idea so again turning on and off the image blur um, surface blur sorry uh, you can see what it looks like before and after also quick point that if you're working on a big file and your computer's not that strong applying these filters will slow it down and take a long time to render uh, in this particular case I am working with a raw file and th this is about 24 uh, megabytes this file so adding filters to it is pretty time consuming alright guys thank you for watching don't forget to follow me on Twitter check out my Facebook page and don't forget to visit all the people that made this shoot possible uh, makeup by Andy someday to runway make sure you go ahead and check them out I will leave links into uh, to the description uh, below and go ahead and click on my buddy David for supplying the tracks that you're hearing uh, during this uh, tutorial. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Talk to you later. Peace.